Engineering Tier D Adventures. Hope everyone's all in well out there. As always, thanks for tuning in. Much, much appreciated. So, that last episode, we went over the base camp, took it out, got some nice runs in it, got a good baseline for it, and now we're ready to start some mods. So, got the base camp here set up on the uh, Skyro C scale here. So, real quick here, so the total weight the as rtr no battery the truck is weighing in at 2385 grams which translates to 5.26 pounds which is a very good weight for the truck you know not overly heavy uh, not super light a very good weight uh so moving on into the percentages our bias side to side and forward bias you know front to rear so actually rtr as it sets the truck is 50 50 balance side to side now there is a battery tray on the driver's side and a battery tray dead center in the rear so how's how does that affect so if you put your battery on your driver's side one here where it is the lower more optimal position that is going to change your bias a little bit more towards the driver's side now if you put it in the rear that rear battery mount is a little bit higher so you're going to have some more top end weight and it's going to put it more towards the rear which that will affect your forward bias so speaking of forward bias as it sets now the truck is 52 percent front 48 percent rear so yes it does have more forward bias but not a whole lot it is almost it is close to 50 50. now i like to target my trucks even rtrs unless it's just a pure trail truck and i don't really care now, if i'm am trying to get some performance out of the truck i'm going to aim for 60 40 or even 65 35. you know i want at least in that 60 to 40 range preferably 60 maybe a little bit more so a few things that can work on that and we'll go over some of those as i dig into what all i've done but on a 10.3, one of the simplest ones, and usually one of the first mods I always recommend, is at least some brass portal covers or knuckles. Now, this isn't going to be exact, but we'll get the idea here. So, we'll just set them on top of the tires there. So, even those right there, they're not, you know, overly huge, and those are just the covers. But even just putting them there, again, this isn't exact. This is to get the idea. That is changing it right there to 55% forward bias versus the 52 it comes with stock so it is it's just stuff like that weight placement just a little bit of weight in the right places not going super crazy or all out which i'm about to do but that's beside the point it doesn't take much to make a big difference so we're just going to kind of get right into it i'm still uh waiting on a few pieces so we'll which will work out okay. We can uh, extend this over a couple of videos. So this is going to be uh, my first blam, my stage. This is what I want to do uh, first. So what are some things that I recommend on just a 10-3 to, to begin with? Um, now, one of the things that normally I would recommend, and I mentioned in the previous video, is the panhard mount on the chassis. In the other, other forms, it is plastic. That it can be a weak point. This is now at least metal. So that at least helps some strength there. Don't know exactly how high quality metal it is, but I'm going to take it over plastic. So next would be the panhard mount on the axle. It is plastic here on the axle um, housing. Now also, I mean, the 10-3 portal axle in general, it's just one you have to be careful with. I think the plastics have gotten better. Um, the last couple of replacement housing sets I've ordered or just single housings have seemed to help hold up a lot, lot better uh, to abuse than they did previously. So I don't know if there was a change or, you know, I'm just getting better at not breaking things but bare minimum this panhard mount is a weak point now you do not have to go bonkers by any means you do not have to do what i am about to do in this video it is a ten dollar insurance policy for that axle and it is available on the gsp page this right here it is an ar45 axle panhard brace it is a great option and something that i would definitely definitely recommend you get. Um, even if you're not building it, you just have a 10-3 for whatever, $10 is well worth it. It fits in very nicely in the housing itself um, and bolts to it. I have it on my class one truck. Um, I'm running Air 45 plastic axle housings and I have that mount on there and it is great. Um, or even if you have a housing and you've broken that stock panhard, you can get that $10 piece bolted on and you now have a metal panhard. Next thing, earlier you saw with the scales, I mentioned some brass portal covers. That is something I do recommend. You know, just a little bit of weight. I'd do the same thing on TRX 4s, uh, Gen 8s if I ran them or whatever. I am okay with recommending and putting a brass portal, outer portal cover on those style of axles in the front because it is. It helps give you just, you know, enough more forward bias and stuff like that 
um, and it's not rotational, it not weights down low, and it's hidden by your wheels for the most part. So that is something I'm okay with. Either brass portal cover or brass knuckle or a combo of the both, totally up to you. And again, aftermarket support across this is across the board. Key City Hobby, A-Main, Hobby Town, um, RPP Hobby, Tower Hobbies, options are out there for parts like this. You don't have to go crazy by any means. So next up, I do generally tackle, if not all the electronics, I tackle the servo. Not being able to steer and get all of it irks me a lot. So driving that first time, I'm turning the wheel and the stock servo is like, I'm getting there. I'm getting there. So we're going to tackle that. We are throwing in a uh, three wheelers RC G14 uh, direct power servo. We'll run this whole thing um, on 3S. We'll tackle motor and ESC in the next video because Honestly, I wasn't mad at this combo at all. It did pretty good. It was nice, it was smooth, it was quiet. So I'm very happy there. And I do run Spectrum Radio. So the stock receiver, awesome, because I could just pair it right to mine and not have to worry about getting another one. And it does have an auxiliary port to run a winch. And that is something we will throw in as well. Um, we're just going to throw in a micro servo winch that we had laying around. Next up, I already have the wheels and tires off and we have new wheels and tires ready to rock and roll. Um, we're gonna put these on here. Um, these are some... Uh, Vanquish Method uh, 1.9s in orange, and on them are the Jade Concepts Hunk tires, um, which I do enjoy this tire a lot. And inside, I think you probably saw me doing my live stream, we have uh, Three Brothers RC dual stage foam uh, with a tuning ring combo that's been working for me, as well as the uh, tuning disc that goes um, in between the tire and the foam. Uh, next up, as far as axles themselves, I am <laughs> installing new axle housings. We will be installing these uh, Vitavon Air 45 replacement axles here. Um, now, these are not solid brass. That is anodized gold um, coloring. Now, the knuckles and the portal covers and the diff cover, now those are brass. But as far as the actual, actual housing itself, it is aluminum. It's just, it is anodized gold. So, I thought it looked really cool. But I said I already had them for another project, and that project ended up going a different route. So, now I have a whole extra set of housing. So, they're going on here. Again, you do not need to go overboard like I have. So inside those axles, while I already have gears and everything apart in the front, we're gonna throw some overdrive portal gears in there. Now that is one thing I truly love about the um, axial style portals here, the AR45 and the Capra, anything with those styles um, or how easy it is for the overdrive. We'll just simply be swapping out the portal gears in the front for these portal gears. Um, I'm going with the 14T, 21T, uh, portal gear combo, um, which equates to about 24% overdrive. Um, so it's going to be significant, not over, but you know enough to make a difference. And I will link um, everything down below that I'm using in this build. Um, in case I do forget to mention something specifically, everything will be linked or at least listed what I used uh, down below. And the last part that we're going to be uh, taking care of in this video are the shocks. I said, I'm not mad at the shocks. I'm going to use them. I'm just going to try to get some more out of them. I'm going to take all the shocks off. I'm going to drain the oil out of them and I'm going to put some new shock oil in. I'm going to start with, I think, probably either uh, probably a 45 front and rear or 40, 45 um, oil in the shocks. And I'm going to be doing a mini T-spring mod on here um, using uh, some in the works RC uh, parts, some spring cups, and uh, some other covers, and of course the low Z mini T springs. And I do have a previous video um, on this mod that does walk it through exactly how I do that. So if you want to see that in depth, um, scroll back through and check that video out. In the meantime, I'm going to get to work and we'll start swapping some stuff out. Well, we are all done and back together real quick. Got everything taken care of. Uh, servo swapped out, um, winch installed. I did go ahead and install an ESC, but we'll cover that in the next video as well. We got the shock spring uh, mod done on everything and axles, wheels, and tires. Well, did I make an improvement? Let's check some running video and then we'll get back and get my thoughts.
Take a look at the video and then how it came out today. Yes, I did actually make a difference in the truck. Um, it performs drastically different than it did that first time out in stock, which I mean, obviously starting to upgrade some things and whatnot. Generally, unless you just do it totally wrong, you're going to make the truck better. Now, by all means, you do not have to do what I did or go crazy in certain areas like I have. That's not what I'm about. I'm not trying to make you drain your wallets or anything like that, do anything like that, or try to, you know, copy the bills. You do not have to do what I do on this or have done. I went a bit overboard. I went a bit excessive right off the bat. It's not a thing. I enjoy the build. This is what I truly like to do with the trucks. I like to get in there and change as much as I can to a point. Overall, um, the truck performed immensely better um, versus that first outing. Um, definitely was able to conquer areas it could not conquer before and even other areas it tackled even easier. So that was definitely good. I definitely saw a major improvement in side hill. Turning and steering was so much better. And the amount of traction gained with the tires and foams on here versus the sock setup was amazing. And, you know, especially able to see in the video. Um, one, for example, was that flat wall. In the first video, the truck couldn't do it. And I tried far longer than what was in that video. I must, I probably spent a solid five to 10 minutes on that wall with the truck and the stock platform, trying to get it, trying to get it. Even just trying to send it and just shoot it up. I could not get it to go. But like I wrote in that video, I don't feel too bad. I've never, we've never had an RTR there make that its first outing in a true RTR form. But today it was able to get out there and conquer it. And it conquered it with ease in my opinion. Nice little quick bump just to get over um, an undercut right there. And then slow traction, let the tires work, let the truck work and eat. And it did all the way up to the top there. And I'm super happy with that. A couple other areas it was able to tackle even um, our front wall area. I wasn't sure if this was going to tackle today. I um, did take a couple tries. Uh, that first one was just, I just wasn't paying attention. Um, I was watching the camera and the truck started to slide, but we got it that second time up and we were good to go there after I caught the truck and almost fell. Definitely made improvements and it shows there. So back to in the beginning of the video, I had the truck full stock on the scales. We were setting 5.2 pounds, 50, 50 side to side and 52, 48 front bias. So where's it set now? Um, I did put the scales on as soon as I was done. Definitely put on some weight, <laughs> which I knew was going to happen. It's almost hard not to put on weight over the stock RTR just for the simple fact, just changing wheels and tires is going to increase the weight significantly. Uh, aluminum beadlocks, way more than plastic. Dual stage foams, way more than single stage foams in here. Even the tire compound itself um, may or may not be less. I'm not taking this tire apart and weighing all that, but I knew I was for sure putting some weight on with just wheels and tires alone. And then of course I did do full housings and added some brass in the front area. So stock, it was 5.2. After um, an outing at the buffet, it is weighing in at 6.3 pounds. So significant weight increase, yes. Now I easily could have saved a lot of that with axle housings or other options there. Not saying you need to make the truck a tank. Not saying you need to make the truck a tank. But weight in the right places are okay. Now back to percentages. Still maintaining 50-50 um, side to side balance. And then for four bias, we went from 52 in its original form. We are now setting at 58%. So almost quite to the 60. Um, I'm still working on that. Um, we'll address that after body and some other changes. I'm going to remove this, get rid of this battery tray, a couple extra mounts back here. Um, I'm going to get some different bumpers on here and a body. Once all that's more 
how it's going to be. Then we'll go from there and I'll work on a little bit of tuning here and back to weight. Like I said, weight in the right place is okay. You know, yes, I, I put on weight in the right places, a significant amount and got great results. You know, I could probably do the same in the reverse option. I could try to strip it down even more than it already is, but still just a little bit of weight in the front and I would still probably, again, get great results. Uh, mostly the biggest results are going to see with some tires. Tires are going to do worlds better than the stock tires and the brass portal covers. Now, like I said, if I hadn't been already overboard, that's probably what I would have done initially. Just wheels, tires, a steering servo, and portal covers. And that's probably honestly how I should have did it. But I got excited. I had a, I had a parts pile. I wanted to get it on. So we just went with it. On to uh, the shocks. The shock mod here. Uh, again, super happy with that. We ended up going with 40 weight oil, front and rear. Super good there. And again, we did the mini T-spring mod um, using some in the works RC parts. Um, and I'm using a medium low C T-spring in the front and a firm in the works mini spring in the rear. And overall, overall that's handling good. And I could definitely see an improvement on the side hill, seeing some of that body roll and stuff like that. So overall, everything to this point has been good. Um, next up, um, we do have a motor um, and ESC that we'll cover there. And um, we did get a body in while we were out crawling today. So we're going to get that prep painted and go from there. Hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, uh, hit that like button, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already, and we'll keep continuing on here with the base camp. So as always, everyone have a great one and crawl on.